Hello heroes, Joe Smith here. Uh, first of all, sorry for the video being crappy production wise. Joe Smith is not a videographer, whatever, professional. Um, just doing this with a cell phone, showing uh, screens on the computer here to uh, talk about this. And you know, this crap is starting to get out of control and very disturbing. And by that, Joe Smith means can't go anywhere without some liberal spouting his mouth over crap. I'm trying to keep this G-rated or PG-rated here. At least PG rated, maybe PG 13. You know, Joe Smith here, he's kind of brutally honest sometimes, and, you know, some things slip. But try to try keep things PG or PG 13 at least, trying to abstain from any R rated language here. And I'm going to talk about some comments from someone and this is not an attempt to I guess what you call dox him or bully him or cyber bully him or anything like that uh, please do not comment or, or contact him please do not you, you comment on this video your opinions feel free to comment your thoughts and opinions on this video by all means good bad whether you agree disagree whatever as long as you uh, don't do any bullying or uh, abstain from profanity uh, yourself or whatever. But do not contact him or do not go to these other videos and post replies sticking up for Joe Smith here or to badmouth him or anything like that. Don't harass him. Not trying to harass him anyway here, not even replying to him anymore at this point because he's just so freaking stupid. But a lot of you heroes know that J uh, Joe Smith got into the, the baseball cars, the sports cars, and been kind of uh, trading and selling them as a little side gig here at the shop, at the bike shop and that. And And these are a couple of videos from uh, sports card um, collector channels or, or that. And this guy is just bringing politics and just all sorts of crap into the discussion where it honestly does not even belong here in the first place. Don't know what his problem is. He's probably like some 12 year old that watches too much CNN or something. But he goes off and starts thinking everyone's racist. And I'm going to show you all the comments from both videos. Uh, just so there's no question that Joe Smith is kind of leaving out important details uh, that started this argument or something. Just trying to make Joe Smith here look better. Going to be upfront, honest here, and show every comment he made and every comment Joe Smith made here, and let you be the judge and let you decide. But again, if you think he's in the wrong, do not contact him, do not harass him, do not go to these videos and post replies and harass him. Leave him alone. Because otherwise, if you get into an argument with him, he's an idiot, and he'll just beat you down to his level and then beat you with experience. Because that's what idiots do. They beat you down to their level and then beat you with experience. So don't fall for their trap. Joe Smith just kind of posted his thoughts, not replying anymore at this point, because he's just stupid. But this is talk. This video here is where it started. Uh, top 25 most valuable Shaquille O'Neal basketball rookie cards uh, from his rookie year, 1992-93. And Joe Smith does have a uh, one of the cards on this list, or at least one of them. 
Um, I still got to dig through a bunch of other old chat cards that Joe Smith has, see if he's got any more of them, but got at least one that he knows of. And this guy just starts spouting off that, oh, if Shaq was white and not black, then his cards would have been worth a lot more money than they are now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how this all started. And here it is. Uh, guy by her screen name, Guy Williams. It's actually pretty sad to think how little these cards are worth, considering how important the player is and was to the game. And I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I bet if he was white, his cards would be worth a fortune. And yes, Joe Smith kind of agreed for the agreed um, to the first part, saying that yeah, Shaq was a pretty pretty good player. Uh, for certain roles anyways um, and yes his car should be worth uh, more maybe but going to go on here and explain why they aren't more worth more I think some other people in the, elsewhere in the comments had touched on the same topic because of over production basically like Joe Biden printing money now money's worthless well, they print hundreds of thousands of these cards, so you can get them anywhere. Everyone's trying to sell them. Everyone's trying to get rid of them. Nobody wants to buy them. But Joe Smith, being, you know, kind of sarcastic, being kind of a smartass, say yes, because Kobe and Jordan, etc., cards aren't worth crap either, sarcastically, because they actually are worth a lot, and a lot more than Shaq cards. But John Stockton cars are selling for millions. Well, again, sarcastic. Because John Stockton cars aren't selling for shit. So, how's Kobe and Jordan cars selling for thousands of dollars and John Stockton cars aren't? I mean, John Stockton's white and the other two aren't. So, shouldn't the John Stockton cars be selling for a lot more money than this guy? According to what this guy's claiming? But Joe Smith went on to say, John, John, say uh, I admire Shaq for his attitude in life after playing ball. You know, he's been like a uh, honorable sheriff deputy or something for a few different police jurisdictions. And he went back to college and got a degree, and like master's degree or something, and economics and business and business investor and you know Shaq is a really really super cool guy but at the time when he was playing basketball he could not shoot free throws he was just a big rebounder or low post dunker yes he helped teams tremendously through those roles plus blocking shots not saying that Shaq was worthless he he was a good player uh, with kind of specialty that he was good at. But then other things he wasn't so good at, like the free throws, everyone knows. That's why the term hack a shack uh, came about, because everyone knew Shaq couldn't free, shoot free throws, so they would foul him on, person, on purpose just to put him on the line every time he got the ball down low and had a chance to dunk it or do a layup. He just fouled him because that way he didn't make the easy two points and he went to the free throw and maybe made one or maybe made none. So it was just kind of gamble that teams did. So hack shack kind of got coined as a term. Not saying Shaq's a bad person. Not saying Shaq's not a super talented, awesome guy because he is. Uh, just saying that he couldn't shoot free throws. But the card value is more supply demand related. 100,000 of some of these cards were made, and maybe even more. Don't know exact numbers. Maybe, maybe less, or maybe more. But you know, tons and tons of them were made. 
compared to today's print runs. So 100,000 or more of some of these cards were made and thanks to eBay it's easy to find. You get on eBay and there's like uh, 150 listings for them. And everyone's trying to get you by theirs instead of you buying someone else's card. So everyone's trying to be the cheapest seller. As simple as that. It has nothing to do with race. Same way for any player, any sport, ever. Got too many cards on the market, too much competition. Everyone's trying to be the cheapest. And through eBay, everyone can become a seller, whether you have a business or not. And as you can see, uh, Joe Smith actually had uh, three likes on that post. And this was just posted, uh, well, two days ago originally. And this is like real small channel, only like two and a half K subscribers. It's uh, Guy Williams when I say I love how white guys do that thing where they say they have a black friend, so that means they are racist. I think he meant to say they aren't racist. It's like how racism doesn't affect this because of a couple examples or anything. It probably doesn't even exist anymore according to this white guy who clearly loves pushing agendas and doing what he's told. I bet he wants you to get vaccinated as well because that's what he was told to do. And he... And that's kind of where it ended there. Can't click any more or whatever to see any more. It's, then he went on to say it right after that. Or, well, that was at it, so I don't know if he cut out the end or something. But then he went on to say it right after that. It's funny how every time I make one of these comments, it's a white guy that comes running to tell me that racism doesn't exist and the people who like his comment are white. No people of color ever disagree with me. Isn't that weird? Well, doesn't that sound like a racist comment there? Again, don't go troll this guy. Don't go harass him. He's not worth your time. He's not worth your effort. Just showing you one of these Joe Biden voters here. Everyone's like, well, who the hell voted for Joe Biden? Like, well, here's one of them right here. Uh, this guy, uh, Jeep Seatown, replied to Guy Williams, that's because it's mostly old, over old conservative white guys that can afford sports cars or young black sports athletes go figure, well, that, that sounded kind of like a racist comment there. So, he's saying that Joe Smith's comment here is a racist comment. Sounds like every comment from these two guys are racist instead. And Joe Smith went on to say, uh, Yesterday I love how ignorant liberals assume my race and assume I was never a victim racist or other forms of discrimination like based on age, size, etc. Like it, how people think a league that's 90% black is racist against blacks. If sports were racially equal to the racial makeup of the country, then only 15% of players would be black and there would be more Asians and Hispanics. So let's replace LeBron with Jose and a 5 foot tall Asian guy. That would make it equal. I love how you prove my point and use stupid labels like liberals. If you are a military man, you clearly can't think for yourself and push whatever gender you're supposed to instead of player percentages, what ownership, or whatever. It's like, oh, he wants to go into ownership. Okay, well, who's the Jacksonville Jake Burrows on my, uh, um, assuming the guy still owns it, but a couple or a few years ago anyways, it was owned by a guy from India. 
I came here and started uh, auto parts warehouse distributor business and uh, from scratch came here with nothing and started that business and kind of grew it and and made a bunch of money doing that and I think he went into a couple other things and then made a bunch of money doing that and then bought the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that's kind of a real cool story to hear. But because more of the teams aren't owned by Asians or Hispanics or Blacks doesn't mean racist. racism exists. Uh, Michael Jordan, a black man, owns a NASCAR team. Uh, Bubbles Wallace. Michael Jordan is the owner or co-owner, I think with Denny Hamlin. Uh, Bubbles Wallace uh, race car team on NASCAR. So, you know, everyone thinks NASCAR is just a bunch of white rednecks uh, racing around in circles, I quote. And why is one of the most famous black ball players ever an owner of one of the race teams? You know, just because more black people don't want to be owners of sports teams doesn't mean that there's racism. Okay? You can't force someone to own a freaking team. You can't force someone to start a business. If they don't want to start a business, if they don't want to own a business, if they don't want all the hassles, well, you can't force them to. He also went on to say only super racists say everyone is racist. Only white people and, and Jews in the U.S. can be made racist. That ignorance is commonplace. It's funny how pointing out makes typical white guy so mad that he starts bringing up victim. This and that. Anything to avoid admit racism problem. Remember Donald Silver? Boy, that sure went away fast. But do you really think that story was the... Uh, not sure what he was going on to say or whatever. Don't know. He's talking about Donald Donald Trump or who's Donald Silver is. What's funny is Shaq is considered one of the most dominant players of all time, and yeah, he was. Shaq was not only one of the most dominant players of all time, but cross into the superstar realm with most people can only dream about. Oh yeah, he was. And, uh, what, a movie like Kazam or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was a blockbuster movie, Kazam. Yeah, if everyone remember Kazam? Yeah, yeah, Shaq. Shaq was a famous movie star after that movie. So the idea that his cars in particular are available as uh, white guys would be, it's like, yeah, let's see some white guy cars that are more valuable than Kobe and Jordan or Emmett Smith or... LeBron or uh, Lonzo Ball or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you saying, are you trying to say that black men can't afford, this was replied to this other guy, are you trying to say black men can't afford cars or that there aren't any black men that can't afford cars or that there aren't any older black men that can afford cars or whatever? Uh, white people can afford you know, that. Just another stupid comment. But then this channel, this guy posted another video today, and Joe Smith seeing that this guy was one of the first comments, uh, like right after it was posted, asking, well, how much was the box? And he said the video was about fifteen dollars for that, but. Joe Smith guy said, I'm sure you'll say if guy was wider, the box would have been cheaper, but you know, everyone's racist. Kind of being sarcastic, another smartest response based on his other racist comments on the channel's other video yesterday or a couple of days ago. 
love how it trolls. I don't know what words mean. Uh, blah blah blah. I can't admit things. It's that. But the goofy white guy get, keeps bringing stuff up. He can't argue anything. So I guess he's assuming that Joe Smith here is 100% white at this point. Not not very woke of him for assuming assuming race. You know, can't see Joe Smith here in person, and he's don't know Joe Smith's history, but he's assuming race here. So that's kind of effed up of him uh, that he's assuming race. But we shouldn't think you're racist. You only signed up for the military so that you could push racist ideas and kill brown people. Oh yes, Joe Smith likes killing brown people. But the goofy white guy that keeps bringing stuff up, we can't acknowledge anything. Well, you must have one hell of a good conscience, especially since you think everyone's racist. You know, not not saying everyone's racist, just was being sarcastic by saying that he thinks everyone's racist. Well, except if either person or caller says it, then we Sergeant Troll can line us with his and Tom in or something or other. Oh, shit. We shouldn't think you're racist. You won't sign for military so you could push racist ideas. Yeah, he's not reposted half that again. Last people I have respect for you is you military people. Oh, us military people. You're psychopaths. Oh, military people are psychopaths. According to this guy. Again, don't harass him. Don't, don't reply to him. Don't go messaging him. Nothing like that. You knew there was a chance you were going to kill people and you signed up for it because you knew they were brown and it didn't matter to you. So it's a lot about people that love fighting Jewish wars but deny racism when it's right in front of their face and they're the dumbest pawns of the entire racist thing in the first place. Well, this, this guy's really a Joe Biden supporter here, for sure. Oh. Yes, uh, brown people, because in World War II, the enemy was brown. During the Cold War, the enemy was brown. During Vietnam, the enemy was brown. During the Korea War, the enemy was brown, right? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Joe Smith want to say, I see racism right from me, coming from you. I'm mixed race and part Jewish, and I join the National Guard, help with natural disaster cleanup, and to defend your freedom to be a racist and say stupid things while hiding behind keyboard. Well, by the way, uh, the first video, uh, Joe Smith, forget, Joe Smith read this, but it's funny how only one guy, one white guy on this list, and he's only number seventh on the list, while everyone else is black, that link goes to a different baseball card channel here, pretty cool guy, actually, uh, talking about the top, uh, Ricky cards, from this one year, this one year had a ton of famous basketball player rookie cards all in one year, more than any other year ever. Uh, including Charles Barkley, Clyde Drexler, Joel Dumars, Patrick Ewing, Michael Jordan, Carl Malone, Chris Mullen, Hakeem Olajuwon, Isaiah Thomas, Dominic Williams, and Dan James Worthy. All rookie cards all in one year. All, all these famous Hall of Fame basketball players and their first year the same year. First year in the NBA was all this, the same year for all these guys. Amazing, isn't it? Well, as you can see on here that Michael Jordan, a black man, his cars are 
worth of more and should probably actually change it to the screen here uh, because this is the rank of their card value, their rookie card value from that set that year. Michael Jordan, the black man, is worth the most. Uh, Charles Barkley, another black man. Hakeem Olajuwon, another black man. Patrick Ewing, another black man. Dominic Wilkins, another black man. Carl Malone, another black man. Isaiah Thomas, another black man. Clyde the Glide Drexler, another black man. Chris Mall, oh, we got a white man finally. James Worthy, another black man. Joe Dumars, another black man. So, 90% of this list is black, and the only white guy is 7th on the list for value. So, according to this other guy, it's like, well, if Sh and, uh, Shaq, uh, he started like a couple years after this, I think it was, forget for sure, but I think it was like two years after this. But, according to this guy, if Shaq was white, he'd be at the top of the list. Well, Chris Mullen is white, so why is he 7th and not at the top of the list? How come you got Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, Dominic Wilkins, Carl Malone, Isaiah Thomas, and Clyde Drexler all above the white guy? And why do you only have white and one white guy on this list of 10? So... You know, it's kind of hard to argue that if Shaq was white, that his cards would be worth more than Michael Jordan's. Or Kobe's. It's kind of hard to say that, well, because of racism, Shaq's cards aren't worth more than white people's cars when obviously you have 90% of this list is black and only one white guy is even in the top 10. So, yeah. It sounds kind of racism. It sounds kind of racist. It sounds kind of racist against white guys. Shouldn't like, shouldn't like only maybe um, two of these players be black and uh, two Hispanic and one Asian and the rest white because that's uh, racial diversity of the United States of America. But black players outperform all other races and there are no Hispanics, Native Americans, or Asians on this list. Yeah, you're right. That does sound kind of racist. Kind of racist against Asians, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Hey, they aren't drafting them into the NBA. And that they aren't drafting more white guys into the NBA. 15% of the country, or less than 15, about 13% actually, is black. So that means 13% uh, of the NBA should be black. That's not the case. So, this guy wants to say racism exists. Oh, well, certainly not against black athletes. That's for damn sure. Because black athletes have an overwhelming majority in professional football and basketball than any athletes of any other race. And Native Americans, Hispanics, and Asians are the vast majority. So if anything is racism against non-blacks in the NBA and NFL. But then again, like uh, another um, a video did, uh, was college uh, campus, uh, forget the town name, something like that. They went to, like, the University of Florida, I think it was, and asked, well, should your football team be racially equal to the racial makeup of your community?
Because right now the offensive line is one white guy and the rest are black guy. There's no Native Americans, no Asians, and no Hispanics. And then all of a sudden people think that, that thought that like, well, yeah, college admission should be racially equal to the racial makeup of the community. And then they were like, well, maybe we, we want the best players on our team so we have the best chance to win the national title. We don't care if they're all black. We don't care if no Asians or Hispanics or Native Americans get put on the team. We don't care if there's only one white guy on the team. So that video kind of calls some of these liberals out. It's just kind of, this hypocrisy is getting ridiculous and got people like this clown here uh, carrying it into uh, baseball card, sports card channel. That has nothing to do with politics or racial stuff. Which is ridiculous, stupid. No, Joe Smith watches these videos, you get away from that crap. He came and watch a video about basketball cards and famous basketball players without some clown bringing racism into the mix. Oh, that's Joe Smith's thoughts, opinions, rants, whatever, for the night. You don't have to agree. Feel free to disagree. Uh, feel free to post why you disagree. Feel free to say why you agree or, or just post some comments. Or just say hi, thanks for the video. Keep them coming or whatever. Let Joe Smith know that you like them and you're watching. And everyone, uh, happy Halloween, and God bless you all. Joe Smith, sign out.